Welcome back to the Focus ST built engine video series. So we've covered stage zero and stage one. Now it's time to move on to stage two. And um, so in order to do stage two, you're gonna be going past 500 wheel horsepower. These are max ratings that I give. And uh, this is based off just general knowledge um, and you know, just what you need in order to make a certain set horsepower amount and so stage two you're going to be upgrading some things to strengthen the internals past the stage one mark and if you want to make more horsepower than 500 wheel you're definitely going to want to do that so the manly 2618s are the most popular option um, for building the focus st when it comes to making more than 500 wheel horsepower and the ones I'd recommend for stage two is the standard duty um, style wrist pin. These wrist pins that it comes with is a, is a premium 4130 chromoly steel. The wall thickness is a 0.150 inches. And obviously the wrist pin stock size is uh, 2.25. Now a 0 0.150 is going to be good. And it's going to be rated probably up to 550 at the wheels is why I'd rate those. And stage two, this is where I rated it. So this is obviously rated upon what um, brands or materials yeah, you are using for your stage two build. Now, if you have a worn out block and it needs boring, then I highly recommend going to the 88 millimeter which is a standard practice of building these engines. I'd recommend staying 87 and a half millimeter, um, just so you can kind of preserve the block. And in the future, if you want to go 88, you still can, and you won't have to worry about it. Having a thicker uh, cylinder wall is going to help um, prevent cracking as well. So the diamond pistons are the least popular option but I believe these are probably the best option for stage two just because it has a uh, stronger wrist pin. Now it might be made of the same material or close to it, but the wall thickness is um, you know better as far as the wrist pin goes. So you have a 0.180 um, wall versus a 0.150 wall. Now usually general rule of thumb is anything above 160 is pretty decent as far as thickness goes on a wrist pin. Now the diamond pistons, you can't really find them in many places. So you have to actually go to their direct website. They're made in Ohio, made to order, which is really nice. And um, you know, you can receive them, I think within like four weeks um, of them being ordered. And on their website, they don't show 88 millimeter, but upon request, if you email them or call them, they can do 88 millimeter. On their website, I believe they have 87.5 and 87.55. So if you want to go with those sizes, then obviously it's going to be cheaper. The Diamond Pistons are a little bit cheaper than the Manly 2618 Standard Duties, which is really nice because the Diamond Pistons are going to handle more horsepower because the pin is um, going to be stronger with the wall thickness. So that's where the 600 wheel would come from because these are more robust and I classify these as a medium duty and not a standard duty like the Manly's with that wrist pin. So moving on to the rods, um, the most popular option is the Manly H-beams. They've been proven to handle up to 600 wheel and they range from $500 to $520-ish, depends on where you buy them. and. The Cali's rods, I really like these ones, and I actually have a set right here. So that's the part number. I get these from Summit Racing. They um, go for $430. And these have a better rating than the Manly H-beams, um, 200 plus you know, per cylinder. And it also comes with an Amco 18 bushing, which is basically a heavy duty um, wrist pin bushing. Um, it prevents deformation and uh, wear. So I don't know what the Manly H-beam because they don't actually specify which um, wrist pin bushing they use. So unknown on that, I'd probably have to call them to find that kind of information out. 
but I prefer the Cali's H-beams um, just because they're going to be a little bit cheaper, but the quality is right there with the Manleys. Um, they're made in the United States as far as the material goes, and um, they have a little bit better rating. So these would definitely go good with the Diamond Pistons. Like I said, so Mountain actually has these on their site, and they're like 450 bucks. But you can get them for twenty dollars cheaper and and faster shipping if you use Summit Racing with the part number I supplied. Next crucial option is getting your keyed crank. So you want to get your crankshaft keyed, and the reason is is because after you know they say four hundred and fifty wheel um, is like you know the mark of where you should get it keyed. Now there's been a lot of guys out there that have even stock untouched motors um, haven't had keyed cranks and have made more than 500 wheel. It's not just one guy, it's multiple people have done this and they haven't slipped timing. Um, but that being said, it's safer to get your crankshaft keyed and then you get your gear keyed as well. And there's options to get your pulley or harmonic balancer keyed along with it so you get send these out the cheapest option what i did is i bought the crankshaft from a ford um online store and like tasca or sunrise ford for like 260 bucks sent it out to ems they keyed it for i think it was like 130 bucks and then they also sent me a new pulley so you pay for that as well it's like 100 bucks for that and then the new gear so whatever that is, but it came out to about 400 bucks, I believe, total for uh, getting it, you know, brand new crank crank gear, pulley, getting it all keyed. So it's about, you know, same price as if, if you bought the kit from, say, Speed Performance or um, Massive Speed Systems, because they sell these as well. The reason I don't prefer having a keyed crank at stage one is because this is a max horsepower rating. This is not a realistic rating as far as what everyone's gonna do. And what I mean by that is, okay, this is a max rating, but you gotta remember you wanna go lower than the max rating of what your engine is capable of. You don't wanna max it out because then that's where stuff's gonna break. So you wanna keep it below this number, probably 20, you know 40 wheel less than this number and then you're in the safe range for not having a keyed crank which technically you can have a non-keyed crank at 500 wheel i've made 532 on my previous setup with my stock crankshaft and all i had was a arp um, crank bolt and the arp um, bolts for the uh, cam gears so that helps out a little bit more as far as higher torque yield but like i said you don't need it unless you're stage two or further so the balance shaft delete um is definitely highly recommended and i've actually added them to stage zero stage one and it's going to just keep going on and the reason is is because this can be a failure point there's a gear that rides on your crankshaft and the reason that's there is to keep vibrations or NVH lower in the engine because inline four cylinders are typically um, loud as far as internal vibrations go. So, um, for example, the Type R Honda doesn't even come with a uh, balance shaft because it's a high performance engine. And um, so when you wanna upgrade your motor, it's highly recommended that you do the balance shaft delete. You get rid of 18 pounds of mass, and um, it also helps you with parasitic loss, so you don't have as much drag on your motor, um, essentially, and you also gain one quart of oil. Having that extra quart of oil helps the oil system stay better longer and um, keeps everything more cool. Also, there's been reports of the balance shafts and these cars um, actually like getting destroyed and just completely annihilating the engine, failing. Um, the gear rides on the crankshaft, like I said, 
and if it fails it locks up and it'll just destroy the whole crankshaft and motor and you need a new engine so it's a complete uh, disaster of a design do the balance shaft delete kit now the kit would be a block off plug and you also because when you remove the uh, gear when you remove that there's a hole that you need to plug so there's a plug that you get it's like thirty dollars um, and then you get a baffling kit for your oil pan so that way there prevents splashing and you know all that on the crankshaft because because the 2014 and up or 2015 and up didn't come with baffling in their um, oil pans from what I heard so the 2013 definitely came with baffling in their oil pan so it's kind of a weird design why they change that I would highly recommend the stage 2 cams just because you want to match up to everything else on your stage 2 the stage 2 cams would require upgraded um, valve springs and I actually don't have it listed here so what I would recommend is getting the uh, Piper um, single spring valve springs and that way they're they're only like rated for 45 psi worth of uh, seat pressure but they work really good for you know lower boost applications I'd say probably below 32 pounds of boost they're definitely really good but above 32 pounds of boost you're gonna want more seat pressure then the option would come you need like super tech like a 72 pound seat pressure 83 pound something crazy with higher rpm and higher boost application you definitely would want you know higher seat pressure now having cams is going to help you go past the 500 wheel mark and um stage two is really a really perfect cam i believe i've had them before they have a really good mid-range and it helps the turbo spool a lot better in the mid-range and they also have a good top end up to like 7,000 rpm the reason why i like or highly recommend the the piper valve springs is because they come with a uh, german steel retainer and that's going to be equivalent or if not better than oem steel retainers and it's definitely going to be way stronger and more reliable than the titanium retainers that come with other you know valve springs that are out there so you gotta really look at that too so put that into mind that you know if you get a higher seat pressure valve spring and you get a titanium retainer they're only going to last like 15 20 thousand miles um for you know just regular driving anything stage two and on i wouldn't recommend for any daily anyways i mean you can do it but you know it's not recommended because of the 2618 pistons you know if you go with titanium retainers all that is going to wear out your cylinder walls more it's going to wear the retainers because those certain metals aren't made to be cold started all the time non you know off and on off and on like multiple times a day it's just not made to do that because it's going to wear out the engine more and um does not last as long so stage two and on i'd recommend for summer only car or a weekend warrior um something that you're not going to put a lot of miles on all the time so you're going to want to go with arp 625s this is the best option i would skip over the l19s and the reason is is um, l19s are really nice but the thing is is you can't touch them with your hands and i imagine some people have forgotten that they can't do that so um you need to wear gloves the oils from your skin get absorbed in the metal and it'll essentially like rot it from the inside out and um you know, this like break apart it's crazy so i just shy away from l19s and i'll go to 625s 625s are made of stainless steel not gonna rust you're not gonna have any of those you know fatigue issues now there has been some 625s that have broken out there stuff happens but for the most part arp 625s you can get these from ems which i highly recommend or speed performance 
Now they're the ones from EMS. They make a V1, which is basically the smaller washers and nuts compared to the speed performance ones, which they have a bigger upgraded nut, which basically allows more clamping pressure. Now, that being said, do you really need that for stage two? No, um, you can just go with the standard, <clears throat> you know, washers and nuts like ARP 2000s have, but you're gonna have the stronger um, 625 to help prevent your head lifting um, for this power range right here. And also they're reusable, you know, pass three times. Like the uh, ARP head studs are good for three retorques normally after you've put them on the car. So the OEM main bolts, I would stick with those because they've been proven for up to 600 wheel, um, 620 wheel horsepower. I would say past 650 wheel is where I'd upgrade the ARP uh, main studs. And, but otherwise, you can just get the main bolts from um, Mountain for like 40 bucks, I believe it is. For, I believe it's 10 of them. And also, you wanna stick with OEM aluminum main bearings. And the reason is for the main bearings, um, these have been proven as well, over 600 wheel horsepower. A buddy of mine and many others um, have ran the aluminum main bearings for over 100,000 miles with 600 plus wheel horsepower, no problem. So there's no reason why on a stage two setup uh, you can't run aluminum main bearings that are OEM, and um, you know they just they're just stronger than any main bearing out there. They uh, they're made of uh, you know really strong aluminum. They're better than you know the bimetal um, aluminum that the King Racing makes. So and they just you know there's hardly any scuffing. I, I had 46,000 miles of my main bearings. I should have kept them and there's no wear on them at all it's crazy but the uh, rod bearings you should definitely upgrade those to acl highly recommend acl over king bearings just because acl is um been around longer they're higher quality and um, i'd also recommend getting the uh, extra oil clearance so this is the ones i got right here that's the part number I got mine from uh, Summit Racing, fast shipping, you know, really good price. And um, they're made in Australia, so that's a plus. If you want to do upgraded main bearings, which you can, but you don't have to, these are the extra oil clearance main bearings from ACL, right there. But like I said, you don't have to. Um, the rod bearings, you definitely want to do those just because they're the ones taking the beating more than the main bearings. So it's good just to get the better crush resistance and pressure resistance for the rod bearings. Running the uh, extra oil clearance, you know, will allow you to run like a 10W40 or, you know, just something that's a little bit thicker. So that way there, you know, you have better protection for your higher belt motor. So that's it for stage two today uh, hopefully that covered everything i've gotten some comments that you know a lot of people um, have wondered why for example i haven't included key crankshafts in stage zero stage one it was just because of how i rate these stages um you know this is a max rating this isn't like what you're realistically going to run as far as you're going to want to run like 40 or 20 wheel horsepower less than this. This is just a max rating of your engine, so of what the internals can handle. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Just like this, so 550, 600 wheel. Now on any H-beam, honestly, I wouldn't go past 550 wheel. I don't care what H-beam it is. Um, you know, I just personally wouldn't go past 550. You can. There has been people that have done it, but like I said, I just, I wouldn't do it. Hopefully that helps out everyone, and um, we're going to do a stage three next. I don't know if there's a stage four. There probably is. You know, stage four could be billet blocks or some crazy nonsense, you know. Um, but yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed it, and uh, have a good day.